Y les presento al profesor Thomas Janssen, um, Supply Chain and Purchasing Management Program Director, y a John Bor Bregman, Office of International Admissions at Audencia Business School. Welcome, Professor Thomas in Jumbo, and let's begin with the presentation. Good. Thank you, uh, Carla, for the quick introduction. Uh, so, yeah, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm not quite sure how many uh, participants that we will have, uh, but I understand that we will have a lot. So I'm going to run a webinar for about 20 minutes where I will talk to you about uh, supply chain management practices for COVID-19 and beyond. Um, as uh, Carl already said, um, I'm a professor at Audencia Business School in France, and I head up the um, MSCPM program. Uh, so that's the Master of Science in Supply Chain and Purchasing Management at, uh, at Audencia. Um, now, uh, supply chain management is quite an established uh, subject. Um, but if we think about the last couple of months with the COVID-19 crisis, everybody seems to be talking about supply chain management now. So where, you know, just until a couple of months ago, a lot of people were, of course, not aware of, of uh, supply chain management uh, as uh, any important topic, uh, now suddenly seems to be on, on everybody's lips. And of course, it's because uh, we are, globally running out of very important supplies uh, that we normally would take for granted. Uh, so, of course, we have all uh, he heard the stories about uh, everybody, uh, consumers uh, wanting to buy toilet paper for some reason, and supermarkets have, have, uh, have been running out of, uh, of, of thing, basic uh, things like toilet paper. And, and uh, perhaps more importantly, also, we have seen uh, really serious supplies problems uh, when it comes to uh, various uh, personal protective equipment that we are all desperately needing for uh, to, to be able to, to protect ourselves against the COVID-19 uh, crisis or, or, or virus. So what I want to do is to run you quite quickly through the topic of supply chain management, and then share with you some thoughts uh, of mine uh, about challenges, but also opportunities uh, because of, of uh, the COVID-19 crisis. So what I want to do is, first of all, just give you a little bit about context. Um, so uh, why do we talk about supply chain management and, and, and what do we mean in basic terms about supply chain management? And then I'll talk a little bit about some of the the current uh, practices, some of the current challenges before we then talk briefly about uh, COVID-19 uh, challenges and what I think that means for the future of uh, supply chain management. So if we think about, first of all, how companies, manufacturing companies traditionally operate, well, if we go back a few decades, a lot of companies would do a large proportion of the activities in-house. So a lot of the manufacturing processes would be done by manufacturing companies themselves um, in-house. So they would have their own factories. Um, but if we think about one of the biggest trends that we have seen globally over the last uh, few decades, it's the trend towards outsourcing. So actually these days, so-called manufacturing companies don't really manufacture a great deal themselves any longer. What they do is that they outsource a lot of these processes to specialized subcontractors or suppliers, then then manufacture part of the product products uh, themselves. Um, a lot of outsourcing also concerns a lot of service activities uh, that companies need. So, for example, a lot of transport services uh, or a lot of logistics services uh, have been outsourced to, to suppliers. And that means that companies are becoming more and more dependent on having reliable suppliers. So let me give you a very quick introduction to what I mean by supply chain management. And I'm going to, first of all, draw from this diagram here, uh, which is a, a model called SCORE. 
uh, very famous supply chain operations uh, reference model. And what it does is basically to show the basic operational processes um, uh, in a supply chain. So if we just look at the center of this model, yeah? So we have your company. So imagine that you're uh, working for a manufacturing company. The basic processes that you have in the company from a supply perspective is that you need to source some ingredients, some raw materials. You need to make or manufacture or transform those ingredients into final products and you need to deliver them to the customers. Now, in this supply chain, we have an upstream side, which is that side that includes suppliers. So we have our immediate suppliers or our direct suppliers, what we call first tier suppliers. Um, and they have, in fact, the very same processes that we have source, make and deliver. So we buy from direct suppliers, first tier suppliers, first tier suppliers in turn buy from their own suppliers. We call them second tier suppliers. And so on, the system continues on the customer facing side or the distribution side of the supply chain, we also have a number of different links. So basically we can see that the supply chain consists of a number of different organizations or businesses that all in, uh, manage these different core supply chain processes of source, make, deliver. There's also what we call return. Uh, we're more and more working in an environment where we need to return and recycle our products um, once they have reached the end of life uh, stage, if you like. Um, now, at Udensia, for the MSDPM program, we also have a focus on purchasing in addition to supply chain management. Purchasing is really the part of it, dealing with the sourcing side, dealing with suppliers. Now, fundamentally, we can say that we have three important drivers for purchasing and supply chain performance. It's about buying at the lowest cost. It's about ensuring the best quality of the products that we sell to our end customers. And it's delivering these physically to our customers, to the end customers. We can also illustrate this in a different way where we say supply chain management basically is a holistic concept. It's an end-to-end -end concept, if you like, that begins with extraction of raw materials from the original suppliers going through different stages in the supply chain until the end customer. And we try to manage this whole process as if it's, uh, or this whole chain, as if it's all one singular system where fundamentally the aim is to deliver value to the end customer. Now, purchasing, very briefly, I'll say a few words. Purchasing, we can say, well, purchasing, it's about buying stuff, yeah? It, it, it's about uh, 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 shopping, if you like. Um, but of course, it's not consumer shopping that we're dealing with. We're, we're looking at buying or purchasing in a business-to-business -business uh, context. And, and, and that means, if you like, in very simple terms, it, it is a question of, of big shopping, yeah? It's about having a large budget to potentially spend a lot of money. Companies spend a, a lot of money on buying inputs uh, into their processes, and therefore any savings that they can make has a, a major impact on the profits uh, of the company, the revenue. We focus also more and more, not just on cost, but we talk about uh, making sure that we buy high quality products and fundamentally, we try to help our company to innovate uh, through our purchasing processes in order to provide value, value for money for the end customer. Physical distribution is really at the heart of, of supply chain management. Again, it's about getting fast, flexible and reliable deliveries to the end customer. And recently, of course, uh, we have a number of exciting developments about how can we ensure that delivery uh, to our customers. We also have environmental concerns uh, that are impacting on how we make those deliveries to customers. Now, one of the big trends we have seen in supply chain management is also global sourcing. Sometimes it's about low cost 
country sourcing. In other words, a lot of companies have outsourced some of the manufacturing processes to suppliers or subcontractors in countries where the cost basis is low. Yeah, so we call that low cost country sourcing. However, I mean, look around you, there are lots of different risks um, and, and more and more companies are, are really waking up to what these risks are. So we're talking about the risk of modern slavery, for example, uh, forced labor um, is, is a real issue um, in, in, uh, in some industries affecting supplier operations. We also have other uh, problems, uh, for example, collapsing uh, factories, that my little picture there in, in the bottom right hand corner, uh, that potentially put loads of people's lives at risk. These are all consequences of global sourcing uh, decisions um, and, and supply chain management decisions as well. We also look at the current environmental uh, crisis, global warming or climate change or whatever we call it, uh, causing a number of different problems, plastic pollutions of our oceans and so on. A lot of these uh, challenges are actually also concerning supply chain management because, of course, it, it's, it's about how we source our products. It's about how we produce our products and deliver them to customers. And then what happens to those products after uh, they reach the end of, of, of uh, uh, the life cycle. We see a lot of very exciting development in supply chain management about how can companies actually recover, recycle uh, some of these waste products um, and therefore making productive use of them to produce new products to customers. So just a quick overview here of, of looking at the globe uh, we, we look more and more at, when we look at supply chain management, we look at supply chain risks. Different countries represent different levels of risk and organizations like, for example, the UK uh, Chartered Institute for Procurement and Supply or, or SIPS do this kind of risk mapping. Where is it dangerous? Uh, where is it high risk to source um, uh, materials from, for example? And it completely depends on what kind of industry uh, we're looking at what kind of commodities or categories, as we would say, are companies sourcing. Now, let's talk a little bit about COVID-19. Um, as I said in my uh, introduction, actually, this whole crisis is really making a lot of people think, ah, we're having lots of problems uh, buying products in our supermarkets or in our shops. There are problems, and, and more and more we hear in the news that supply chains are failing, um, there are problems the way that supply chains operate, and so on and so on. So it's a very exciting time to be in supply chain management, uh, to study supply chain management, and to have a career in supply chain management. One of the real uh, issues that we're seeing, of course, at the moment is the whole issue, um, the problems that we're facing about sourcing uh, personal protective equipment, facial masks, or ventilators, medical equipment and so on and so on. I'm going to show you uh, three different slides very quickly that uh, just give you an overview over what's happening. What are companies doing? So what's happening in real life uh, by uh, supply chain managers? Um, and and um, one of the issues there um, uh, is, and, and I'm taking here from uh, some U.S. Uh, research finding from what uh, a research center called CAPS uh, at Arizona State uh, University. Now, they asked a number of different companies here, over 100 companies, um, about what actions are supply management or supply chain groups within companies taking in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is just about a month old, this one here. And you can see a huge challenge is about uh, sourcing of health and safety uh, items. So companies uh, cannot open up um, after deconfinement unless they put the right uh, health and safety uh, measures in place with uh, plastic screens, transparent screens, uh, employees wearing masks, and so on and so on. So that's a huge uh, issue. Another issue is to um, really monitor uh, the supply base 
for suppliers that are fin at financial risk. So we hear more and more stories uh, in the news that companies are feeling bankruptcy, uh, companies are receiving financial aid from uh, governments, uh, companies are struggling, um, you know, really to survive. Now, if you're a company and you're buying in your um, supplies, your materials, your your uh, uh, your your, your uh, safety items or, or whatever that you're buying from these suppliers and they are at risk of going out of business, then you have a real problem, of course. Uh, your supply chain is going to fall apart. That's the last thing that you want uh, when, when you're a supply chain uh, manager. Uh, and, and one of the things that we see is that a lot of these uh, issues do not result from the first tier suppliers, as we talked about earlier, they are actually uh, the result of what we call sub-tier suppliers. So it is the problems that exist in the extended supply chains. And the way that supply chains operate these days, companies are really, they're not in a position where they have very good visibility of that whole end-to-end -end supply chain uh, system. So this is, uh, these are just a couple of things I wanted to highlight. Uh, from this particular slide here. We look at another one. This is still drawing from uh, CAPS research uh, at Arizona State University. And, and it's this one is focusing on uh, financial ac uh, actions that companies are taking. And, and um, uh, you can see here the biggest one, 75% of companies are restricting discretionary spending. So a lot of companies are cutting down on any kind of spending any kind of buying uh, that they don't desperately need in order to operate. They're adjusting their revenue forecasts, uh, they're changing the forecasts and so on and so on. Uh, and there are also a lot of them pulling back on major investment projects, capital investments, for example. And the final one I'm, I'm gonna show here, survey, is um, some actions in relation to uh, personnel, so unfortunately, we see over half of companies that uh, have implemented a hiring freeze, so a stop to more recruitment, um, at least in the short term now. But we're also seeing, of course, like we're doing now, um, more and more online meetings, online seminars, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So new ways of working, which is uh, an exciting development as well. One of the things I think is interesting is that um, we see a lot of uh, problems about how do, do supply chains actually work, yeah? Um, and, and the whole COVID-19 uh, development is exposing a lot of, or several ways in which supply chains currently do not work very well. That's why we're seeing failings. I'm gonna just suggest you very quickly a, a few actions that people like me uh, have, have uh, uh, suggested uh, should happen or uh, are already happening. One is companies need to be better at understanding the uh, overall supply chain. They need visibility or they need transparency over their supply chains. So they need to map their supply chains better. So really, you know, drawing literally their entire supply chains and they can use technologies to do this. The technologies that have been developed in recent years that can really help with this. A second issue I will highlight is that a lot of supply chains are very lean. So some of you may have heard about lean manufacturing or lean production, meaning that there's basically not a lot of slack in the system. Companies have basically policies of zero inventory. Inventories cost money, they have no inventory. They work on a just-in-time basis. Uh, they're very lean. Um, and, and there's a risk that because of their leanness, they don't have the added flexibility to really cope with such a big crisis as we, we're seeing um, at the moment. So there are question marks now over whether companies should change their reliance on lean uh, production strategies, lean supply chains, whether they should implement more backup sources. They need risk management plans, that's for sure, um, and so on. Also, there are question marks now over the big reliance on global sourcing. 
certainly my view is, and this is a view shared by a lot of analysts uh, in our field, companies need to take another look at global sourcing. Within assuming that we live in a global world, well, what if we can no longer travel or we have really serious travel restrictions? We cannot just go and, and, and rely on, on transport from the other side of the world uh, when, when we're restricted in the way that we can operate uh, physically. Yeah. So I'm sure that there will be changes uh, in this regard. And if there's one thing that I want to point out here as well is that now is not the time where we see companies uh, jumping down the throat of suppliers that are, are struggling and say, uh, if you not if you do not honor uh, your contract to us, uh, we're going to find someone else, um, and so on and so on. Actually, what we're seeing now is an emphasis on treating suppliers fairly uh, and ethically, paying suppliers on 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 time, helping suppliers to survive. In other words, um, that that's an important trend. Now, time is running out. I know I've been running quite fast uh, because I basically only have 20 minutes to uh, give you a quick overview over supply chain management and some challenges from uh, the COVID-19 crisis. So if I can just make some closing comments, um, and, and uh, uh, that is to, re, you know, to emphasize the point that we talk a lot in supply chain management about collaboration between the different organizations that make up the supply chains. Um, we need to negotiate with our suppliers. We need to negotiate with our business to business customers. But actually, the COVID-19 crisis is emphasizing that there is more than ever a need to develop collaboration uh, with supply chain partners. And, and the various uh, surveys, various polls, this one here again taken from the UK Chartered Institute, of procurement and supply uh, just back in April of this year that, that also show that this is actually what's happening. So that's all I have to say about the, um, uh, the webinar about uh, supply chain management and uh, the COVID-19 crisis. Um, I think it's an exciting time to be in, in the, this field because it is now um, Supply chain management is something that lots of people are really realizing is important. So we're just uh, asking you a simple question here as part of a, of a poll. Quick question. We have lots of participants there. Are you considering a career in supply chain and or purchasing management? Can you answer quickly yes, no, or maybe? Please take um, an answer to this then we can get a feel for how many of you are, are, are looking at this uh, field as, as a potential career for you. And I have submitted my own answer. Okay, so a quick look. Um, I'm very pleased to see that we have so far 48, 47% now just changed that are saying yes, and um, 5% saying no, 48% saying maybe. Well, I hope that we can tempt you today uh, to study uh, supply chain and purchasing management. Now, what I would like to do is to give you an opportunity to ask some questions. I also have my, my uh, colleague here, uh, Yumbo, who can uh, help you. Uh, very quickly, I, I, just to summarize a few points about a career in, in this field. Um, you know, again, as I have uh, uh, talked a little bit about here, due to the trend with outsourcing, companies need really good, reliable supply chains. They can't have that unless they have highly competent professionals. Yeah, this is becoming a really attractive career uh, for uh, people to work in. Therefore, it's also an excellent area for you to study because you need a qualification in order to succeed as a supply chain 
or purchasing professional. Um, it is m a much more complex field than it was just 10 years ago. Lots to know about technologies, um, but also a lot about, for example, relationship management. You need not just to know about technology, you need a lot about um, soft skills, relationship management, and so on and so on. So, yeah, I would definitely um, uh, suggest that as a career. I, I put this slide in as well because I wanted to emphasize that actually you could also make a successful career when it comes to uh, salaries that you can uh, potentially make. I'll not go into details with this because I want to give you a chance to ask some questions. Uh, but if you look at on the right hand side of this uh, diagram here, uh, this is um, uh, data again taken from the UK, uh, SIPs from, from, from last year. You can see the most here get paid over 120,000 uh, pounds uh, per year. This is, this is excluding any bonuses, by the way. Yeah. Uh, now, these are the most senior positions. So these are obviously um, a minority. But if you just look down here at this diagram, you see um, a number of other potential jobs that you can get. Um, and, and I have just highlighted in the bottom left hand corner of this one um, where our students from the MSCPM program typically end up. So that might be uh, a job as a buyer. You can see a buyer will typically get just under 30,000 uh, per year pounds. Uh, you also might be able to get a job as an assistant buyer or a supply chain um, analyst or supply chain planner. These are just a few um, a, a, a few examples. Okay, but I, you can see here the progression in salary that you, you can uh, get um, uh, in addition to obviously having a very exciting job. That is um, all I wanted to say. Um, I want to give you the chance to ask some questions. Yombo, you're at, on hand as well. I hope you've been able to hear me um, because I've had my camera on all the time. Um, so yeah, fire away. Any questions, please? And, and they, they, uh, if you can ask them in English, uh, we have Carla there as well who can help us with, with the, the Spanish, but um, I don't know about you, you Yumbo, but my, my Spanish is not so good. Carla good. can translate any questions if needs be, but we'll answer in English. Perfect. Okay, we have a lot of questions here. Good. I will start with, um, if I am a supplier, how my prices may vary with this situation? When everything is getting normal, those prices may raise or low? Uh, good question. Of course, prices tend to dep depend on the supply and demand. So um, if you have an increasing demand, you can potentially raise the, the price. So we have seen how the prices for certain uh, items that have been in scarce supply uh, have, have gone up. Um, however, what you don't want to do at the moment if you're working in a supply chain is to exploit that situation. Um, because if you suddenly, as a supplier, you're working with your long-term customer um, and you suddenly say, well, I know that you're very dependent on us as a supplier, so we're suddenly deciding to change charge you 10 times as much. Okay, maybe they will have to accept it, but you need to be careful uh, if you want to have a long-term future with, with that customer. So again, as I emphasized there at the end, companies are really trying to collaborate, help each other through the crisis. Perfect. Um, here we have another question. What's the best strategy a company created for this problem you've seen in this time? Um, I don't think there's a single um, best strategy for how to do this. Um, those that have very good supply chain risk management um, and, and risk management processes in place, 
So that might include, uh, for example, that they have backup sources, so they're not over relying on a single supplier for an important uh, purchase item, but they have ability to switch to other suppliers. Uh, we're also seeing that companies that um, have, have maybe contingency plans in place, contingency stocks uh, in place, for example, are in a strong place. So supply chain risk and what we call resilience uh, are, are really important uh, success factors at the moment. Uh, so by resilience, I mean the ability to recover uh, quickly from, from the crisis. We're also seeing, of course, that companies that have uh, uh, sourcing from uh, global sources uh, can be more at risk, yeah? So just the physical distance between the company and, and the sources can present a risk. Uh, so I don't think there's a single answer at the moment other than um, the action points that I highlighted are, are uh, widely discussed at the moment by a lot of companies across different industries. But look, this is a, a, a new crisis. It's a new situation for companies. It's a new situation for uh, supply chain management as well. So supply chains will, in many respects, have to be redesigned. Okay. So exciting times ahead for the field. Other questions? Okay, we we have another question here from Ryan. Um, he says, taking into account that a vast number of companies are having none but very few long-run contracts and in which they strongly rely, aren't we expecting the worst scenarios coming up in the next few years? I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I didn't hear um, all of that question, but I... If I, if I heard correctly, it's that a lot of companies are relying on short-term contracts rather than long-term contracts, and therefore they can face a difficult future. Is, is that correct, Carla? Mm-hmm, exactly. Question? Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. there's no doubt. There, there's no doubt. Um, companies that don't have uh, long-term contracts with, uh, with the customers, um, they might be you know, cut off from the supply chain by, by the customers as they uh, are cutting back on spend. So if you, if you think about the survey findings that I showed you, uh, companies that are, are cutting back um, on, on any unnecessary uh, spend, as we call it in our field, any, any unnecessary spend, um, yeah, they, they, they can be at risk. Any company that has a long-term relationship or a long-term contract with with a, a customer can be in a better situation because actually that customer can help them to survive as well there's also a question there um diana i'm just looking at there i'm interested in circular economy but i also find supply chain and purchasing management appealing could i learn how to do an industrial uh, symbiosis with waste if i studied this master uh, could i pick up on that question carla um, because that's, sure, that's, a, sure, really, go ahead. that's a really um, interesting question. Um, and maybe I can just go to uh, a little bit of details um, about our program. So uh, the following slide here just gives you a, a very brief overview over our um, MSCPM program at Odensea. Um, that has recently been revised. Um, and if you look at, well, if you look at here, the fourth bullet point, you'll see we focus on responsible and sustainable sourcing and supply chain management, as well as digital technology applications. This is our unique focus uh, in the um, on, on the PM program. So there's a really trend towards responsible sourcing, sustainability. Um, both, as I briefly mentioned, to tackle environmental challenges, um, but also to tackle um, uh, social issues in the supply chain. Clearly, one of the big issues is also about uh, circular economy. We talk more and more about circular supply chains, and this is something that we really emphasize a lot in, in our program, and, and it's something that um, 
Carrick's writers or density of business school as well, that we have a really strong reputation for responsible management. Um, so yeah, um, uh, ab absolutely. It's something that we really focus on um, a lot in, in um, on, on MSCPM. And, and you know, uh, in terms of the future of the field, uh, more and more companies are looking to supply chain management to try to help them to tackle uh, these issues. Um, so uh, actually supply chain and, and purchasing managers will be at the forefront of the whole development towards circular economy. Thank okay. you, Other questions? Um, we have one here from Andrea. Does the situation of the COVID-19 will change the way we work on supply chain? Well, yes, um, it will. I'm absolutely sure of it. Um, and um, uh, I've already outlined very briefly a few of these changes. But just think of it. If we're not allowed, if we, we can't travel, how can we have global supply chains? Um, we need to go and visit suppliers thousands of uh, kilometers away. We need to catch a flight to go and check that the quality of the products that they supply to us is uh, as, as we specify, as we expect. We need to go and check that there's no, uh, you know, what we might call non-compliance with our codes of conduct. So that they might uh, employ child labor, uh, and, and, and the various uh, uh, environmental sustainability issues that I briefly mentioned and so on and so on. How can we do this if we can't travel the same way that we used to in the past? There may be ways around it, yeah, so we can work online. Um, but I, I'm sure we'll see a lot of, of changes. Actually, this ties in also with sustainable supply chain development and circular supply chain development. We're talking more and more about the importance of local sourcing. Um, we have political drivers pushing companies also to manufacture at home, to source from home. Uh, local sourcing is seen as more sustainable sourcing. COVID-19, I think, is yet another development that is pushing companies towards the trend towards local sourcing. Is global sourcing going to disappear completely? No way. I don't think so. Um, because companies also source globally because they want to sell their products globally, yeah? So we're not going to see the end of uh, global companies. I, 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 don't, I, I don't think so, but, but yeah, for sure we're going to see uh, changes in, in the geography of, uh, of supply chains uh, in particular. So yeah, in, in another interesting question I have to say. <laughs> Yeah. I see there are a couple of questions coming in about uh, studying supply chain in general and, and Audencia yeah. and, and our admissions process. So maybe I, this is a good time for me to put you through that and then we'll take up the questions uh, after that. Excellent. So, up, so just some general information about Audencia Business School. Audencia is 120 years old. Uh, today, we're one of the uh, six, we're the sixth rank uh, best business school uh, in France and, and 40th in Europe. We're a triple accredited institution. Uh, what are these accreditations? Equis, ACSB and AMBA, the three main uh, international accreditations for business education. So we're part of that select group of 1% of schools around the globe that um, have all three international accreditations. Audencia is highly ranked. So, for example, the Financial uh, Times ranks some of our programs 46th in the world, uh, 15th for career services. The Economist ranks um, certain of our programs 5th for student diversity. Indeed, uh, we have a very diverse student body here at Audencia. And um, Professor Thomas Johnson mentioned earlier on, innovation, cooperation, responsibility are our values at Audencia. CSR is the DNA of Audencia. Uh, we worked with the United Nations of, on defining uh, the principles of responsible management education. So we're pioneers in this domain. 
Uh, Odensia, what does that look like? About 5,300 students per year, um, 34 of that international. So you'd be sure to study in an international context with an international student body, but very international faculty also. 49% of our uh, teaching staff are international. Um, so basically you're learning how business works uh, across the globe. You'll be connected to a global network. Um, Audencia has its main campus in the city of Nantes, northwest of France, but we also have a campus in Paris, campuses in Shenzhen, Chengdu, uh, Beijing. Um, and uh, beyond that, we have graduates working right across the globe. Um, so more than uh, 22,000 graduates today working across the globe. And our job is also to connect you with that network as a student and graduate. Yeah, a very um, robust career service as a student at Audencia. 90% uh, of our students um, gain employment within two months of graduation. And when you're a student and, or an alumni at Audencia, you, you can tap into that career service, which is very much a boutique service uh, where you'll have one-on-one -on -one counseling with our career coaches, uh, corporate partners that come on campus to recruit our students at different occasions some uh, of our corporate partners, but this is by no means an exhaustive list. Have a look at our website for a fuller list or feel free to send us an email at internationaladodensia.com. Nantes, yes indeed, we're based in the city of Nantes, that's northwest of France, sixth biggest city in France, a very student city, um, but only two hours from Paris, so you can also tap into the Parisian network. I love the statistics, voted second for most welcoming French city for expats. So Nantes is really a place where we feel at home. Um, it's um, known for its Loire Valley, um, a, a beautiful place to, to study, live and work. A number of our masters are programs taught in English, including our specialized masters in supply chain and purchasing management. But we have a number of other general management programs um, available to you or our full-time MBA um, if you're looking for um, that program. To apply, uh, it's a simple uh, online application process for international applicants. Apply online at master uh, apply.audencia.com. Uh, you can have a look at the program details at master.audencia.com. Um, then you'll have an admissions interview uh, via Skype uh, often. And this is just your opportunity to uh, clarify any doubts you might have about your program. And for us to also check that you're a good fit uh, for the program. And rapidly after your online interview, you are uh, given an admissions result. So we really pride ourselves on um, giving your responses as, 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 as quickly and, and, and as efficiently as possible. We have a number of scholarships on offer. I invite you to have a look at our website under master.audencia.com slash scholarships or send us an email. I will be happy to put you through that. Yeah, so those are our contact details uh, for any uh, inquiries beyond uh, this webinar. But let's take the remaining questions while we still have time, Carla. Perfect, Jumbo. Thank you very, very much. Um, somebody here is asking, um, do I need to know French in order to attend to Audencia? Very good question. No, not at all. No. Um, we're an international no. uh, institution. Our programs uh, are international, meaning that they're offered 100% in English. Our faculty uh, come from across the globe. Our student body is also very much international. So all our programs and our services on campus are available in English. Um, so you feel very much at home. English is the lingua franca here at Audencia. Um, indeed, you'll be uh, living in France uh, during that time. So any French you have is going to be of use, uh, but it's not at all a requirement uh, for the program. Excellent. Um, so someone is asking, as a school, what strategies do you use to make your teaching applicable to today? Thomas, would you like to take that one? So, what's that for me? Um, I'm uh, 
busying in the, in the chats here, replying to a question. Can you repeat the question, please? Sure. It is, um, as a school, what strategies do you use to make your teaching applicable to today? Uh, we want to, of course, make sure that um, our program uh, is aligned with the needs of, co of companies uh, across industries uh, for supply chain and purchasing professionals. Uh, so for this purpose, we stay in very close contact with companies uh, and we have their input into uh, the design of our program. We actually redesigned the program uh, back in September of 2019 uh, that really uh, was as a way of, of uh, uh, making sure that we uh, really stay aligned with, with, uh, with the needs for companies. Um, for, for skilled and, and, and competent professionals in supply chain and purchasing management. Uh, so we collaborate with a number of different stakeholders. Um, also through our research, we're all very active uh, researchers. Uh, we also look at, uh, you know, what, what are the, the important trends. Um, we, we have at the moment um, uh, a European uh, funded project that is a collaborative project with other European uh, business schools and university partners uh, looking at uh, developments of uh, uh, competencies uh, for purchasing professionals specifically uh, to address uh, the need for innovation and sustainability. So we, we have a lot of different projects. We have a lot of collaboration with stakeholders, uh, with, with, with companies to make sure that we, we stay right, at, right on the edge, of, uh, leading edge of, of uh, uh, what, what we what we teach. Excellent. Um, somebody here is asking if Audencia offers any kind of scholarships for international students. Indeed, we do uh, offer uh, partial scholarships. So have a look at our website. Um, one uh, main scholarship that's currently running is a diversity scholarship, uh, notably for the uh, MSCPM, uh, Supply Chain Purchasing Management Program. Um, so we want to uh, encourage a diverse uh, audience within our classroom. And if your uh, region or your nationality is underrepresented within the class, uh, you may be eligible for a diversity scholarship. So feel free to send us an email with a bit of information about yourself and I will be happy to uh, consider you and, and reply to your questions about our diversity scholarship. Beyond that, we work with a number of partners across the globe. Um, for example, in, in Mexico, Banco de Mexico, in Colombia, Colfuturo, um, and uh, students can apply to scholarship through these institutions in partnership with Audencia. So again, have a look at our website, send us an email with where you're from exactly and, 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 and what program you're looking for, and we'll be able to put you through the financing options. Excellent. Thank you, Jumbo. There is another question from Natalie. She says, um, international commerce and logistics is connected to this career? Yeah, I can take that. International, you have a degree in international commerce and logistics. Uh, indeed, you are invited to apply to our supply chain and person management program. Um, we want to welcome people with a business and engineering background to the core program. Um, if ever your background isn't strong enough to have access into the core program, there is a preparation year. Uh, so you'd be undertaking a, a, a two year program as opposed to a, 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 an 18 month program, um, a preparation year to get you up to scratch uh, before entering into your specialization in supply chain and purchasing. Thomas, would you like to add to that? Uh, no, I, um, it's very accurate. Um, the majority of the students on the MSCPM program actually have an engineering background, um, which uh, helps in some respects to really engage with some of the subjects. Um, but we also have, have a lot of students with some kind of business and management background, internet, a first degree maybe in economics or international business, administration, for example. Um, as, as you're saying, Umbo, we, we can exceptionally also get people from another first degree and, and often we, we do get people, uh, there, there was a question I just replied to on the chat box there. Um, we, we don't have a, a requirement for uh, 
experience in the field. Uh, but we do have some students uh, who have experience. So we have we have a lot of students who, who may have done say one or two years, um, and and they have you know got a little bit of experience, and then they think, oh, this is actually really interesting. So they want to uh, get some further education to to really uh, really get the career to take off. Excellent. Um, Estefania here is asking, um, do you consider it important to have previous experience in the field before doing a master? Uh, I think that's I just take a this question. question uh, that we're talking about, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, you know, just uh, we, we, it helps if you have a little bit of experience, but it's not a requirement. Indeed. Excellent. Um, Wilson is asking. I've just cut my camera, for everybody, because of connection issues. I'm still here. Perfect. Um, if I get admission to start a master degree in Audencia, what is the the, the tuition fee for international students? Is it high? Okay, very, very good question. I'd invite you to have a look at our website for the specific question, your, 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 the specific program you're interested in. Um, tuition uh, does vary depending whether you're taking the core program or the extended version. Um, what you need to know is that um, education in France is often uh, very much supported by the state. Um, and we do have um, state body of funding and we are able to offer scholarships. Um, so have a look online and reach out to us about scholarships and we can go through that together. Thank you, Jumbo. Um, Professor, here's a uh, question for you. Uh, Nielsen is asking, what vision do you have about the business of the future? Oh, well, that's a very big question. Um, my vision is that the way we do business will fundamentally change. Um, I think we will move towards circular economy. Um, as I already briefly talked about, because um, I simply don't think that the existing way uh, that uh, business is working uh, is, is sustainable uh, from the economic perspective, but more importantly so from a sustainability perspective from a from an environmental perspective I, I i think the costs are simply too high so i think we have to transition towards circular uh, economy and therefore also circular supply chains this could also uh, really have an impact on uh, moves towards more localization moving away from at least partly some globalization uh, I think we're likely to see less of uh, what we call low-cost country sourcing. Some companies call it best-cost country sourcing, but um, fundamentally where uh, companies source from uh, developing countries, developing economies where cost levels are low because of uh, typically low uh, wage costs and, and, and other uh, Costs, but so I think we are also likely to see some changes uh, away from uh, globalization towards uh, doing doing business more locally. But I think that the the, the biggest vision I have is more sustainable uh, business um, and, and 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 circular uh, economy, circular supply chains. Perfect. Um, here is another question that says, what level of English do I need to apply to the English um, teached courses? Jumbo, I guess you're, you're better uh, qualified thank to answer that one. Yes. We, have, we have some uh, requirements Indeed. here. Very good uh, question. Indeed, um, the requirements for the programs are a bachelor degree uh, in any field because uh, depending 
you might be considered for the core program or the extended version. So we do welcome uh, people from all fields. Proficiency in English is a requirement. Um, now, we do look at your overall application. Um, so, for example, someone that didn't do so well in their English test, but they've gotten experience um, in an Anglophone setting since. Um, they come from a recognized university and a number of other criteria we look at that could bring um, up your ranking. So the message to you is that we do look at your overall uh, person and then in your interview, it's also your opportunity to showcase your skill. Um, so there's no strict cutoff point because all applicants are considered and we do um, pride ourselves in, in, in giving each applicant the, the consideration they deserve. Uh, so apply so that we can go through the ranking process and, and have a look at your overall application. Thank you very much, Jumbo. There's uh, a question, or there's, um, Anna uh, has been raising her hand. Anna Montalvo, um, did you want to ask a question? Anna Rosa Montalvo, still there? Okay, maybe maybe text the question if necessary. Perfect. Um, here is another question. Um, a chemist can apply to the program. Thomas, would you like to take that one? A, a chemist? Uh, we would need to look uh, in, in in more detail um, to see if you have studied in your first not of having studied uh, uh, chemistry, you would uh, be qualified for the MSCPM. It is possible, um, but yeah, it's, it's not the typical profile that that, that we get. But to send. Uh, uh, an application or, or even just to contact the our um, recruitment team in order for them to, to look at your CV to apply. Indeed, and you most likely will be considered for the extended version you of might. the program that will it give will. you the opportunity to build fundamentals in business and management before entering into the MSCPM specialization. So you're invited to apply and we, we would be happy to consider that. Thank you very much. Well, um, Ivana here is asking how this master could affect industrial engineering. If it could affect Thomas, industrial engineering or um, if I understand that correctly, yeah, um, uh, as I think I, um, we have a lot of engineers um, on our program, a lot of the students with a, a first degree in industrial engineering, also people who have had a little bit of experience uh, working as an engineer, discover the field of supply chain and purchasing management. Um, and, and I would say it's, uh, it's an ideal starting point for developing uh, uh, your, your career in this field, it gives you an understanding of um, some, some quantitative uh, methods. It also gives you an, a good understanding of, 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 of the of products, of course, particularly um, mechanical products, but it, it might also be, uh, you know, electronics, electrical, etc., etc., um, which, which is very important also then for making uh, sense of uh, how supply chains work. So, so the, the engineering background, uh, industrial, mechanical, electrical, uh, chemical engineering, uh, and then be a really good starting point. Well, hear me because I keep having a message saying my network is unstable here, so I'm going to cut my camera again. Yes. In any yeah, case, I think worry. we're coming to the end of this uh, webinar, Carla. Do we have any final questions? Um, no, they they keep asking about like the scholarship process. I don't know if, if you could like resume that or just tell them to to connect directly. Yeah, scholarships are 
program specific and then country specific. So that it's very hard for me to give a general reply. So I do invite you to send in an email and we'll definitely reply to your particular case. Um, you know, diversity scholarship, for example, is, is given to um, if, if your nationality is underrepresented in the upcoming intake. So if you're one of the first of your nationality to apply to the program, you'll be automatically considered for the diversity scholarship. And then a number of our scholarships with our partners like uh, Banco de Mesco, Col Futuro, as I mentioned, on du Futuros, um, that really depends on your nationality and your context. So send in a, a quick uh, email about who you are and we'll be able to go through those financing options uh, with you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jumbo. So we have reached the end of the webinar. We thank you so much to everyone for being here. Muchas gracias a todos por participar. Um, we try to answer as much questions at, as possible, but if you still have any doubts or questions, you can connect with them at international at .com and visit their webpage. And thank you very much, Professor Thomas and Jumbo, for being here with us. Muchísimas gracias a todos por participar en este webinar. Si tienen alguna pregunta específica o les quedaron algunas dudas, por favor no duden en contactar con Audencia Business School. Aquí están uh, su información de contacto. Y pues muchísimas gracias nuevamente a todos. Thank you so much, everyone, and see you next time. Good. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Hope to see some of you in Nantes, in France. <laughs>